Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and a continuing series on the Steam Deck. More importantly, what emulators you should be playing, how to set them up, and whether or not they work well enough on deck in the first place. And today I'm doing an episode that you've all been asking for, and that is RPCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator. Now follow along closely with this tutorial because I will tell you the setup methodology for the PlayStation 3 emulator is completely different than anything else I have shown on this series so far, so you definitely want to pay close attention and follow all the steps. But if you do everything as you're supposed to do, you can get PlayStation 3 games running on your Steam Deck and they do work great in some instances. I will say right off the top, this emulator does not emulate everything perfectly on Steam Deck and that is not any way, shape, or form a strike against the devs of this. The PlayStation 3 is a very complex architecture. Before we get too far involved though, like, subscribe, all that jazz, you know what to do. The first thing you need to do is if you go into your desktop mode under all applications and scroll down alphabetically, you're going to find the emulator in there. Now, unlike pretty much every other emulator we have set up so far, you don't put any BIOS in any BIOS folders whatsoever. RPCS3 stands alone as its own application and we need to set the emulator up in desktop mode before we can execute any games in the handheld OS. If you hit file and come down here, you're going to see install firmware and we are going to get that system software update from Sony directly off of their website. They host the files and because you own a PlayStation 3 console, this is perfectly fine and permissible to do. If you scroll down, you're going to see two options down below how to update your PlayStation 3 console system software. You're going to do it using a computer and weirdly, you can't just click download. You have to save that link as or else it's not going to come down. Fair warning, if you're using Chrome, it might give you a warning. You can just save the file, no big deal. And then use whatever removable media you want to and copy and paste or drag and drop that file we just downloaded from Sony servers here. You'll see I have two files going on at once, one of the games I'm gonna be demoing as well. But once that is complete, you're 100% good to go back to the Steam Deck and install that firmware via the application on desktop mode. Just be aware my tutorials are dependent on using a dock with a USB connection on the back. You can FTP into your Steam Deck. You can transfer things over however you want. I just like using a dock. I find it very easy to transport files across USB. And honestly, the speeds are relatively comparable to trying to go over the internet anyway. So you can download the firmware via the Steam Dex browser. I just find Windows so much easier. And I'll leave a link to that doc below. But now that we have that file that we need, we're going to mount and open our removable media. And I just left it on the root directory. I find that this installs better if you actually drag it over to the desktop itself. And I tried it from a USB stick one time. It threw up an error and froze midway through, so just copy it to your desktop. That seems to be a good rule of thumb here. And once we have those files, we'll come back to the emulator software, our PCS3. We'll go up to file, and then we're going to scroll down until you see the following. It's going to say install firmware. Install packages, wraps, and edats is going to be for software that is not CD based, and I am not showing you how to install that in this tutorial here. You find the games that you own via the right disks and you dump them and you put them where I show you in a new step. But go ahead and pick that PUP file there. You're going to see it starting to install the firmware and then a screen is going to come up and it's going to compile different PPU modules and other important aspects in the background. I sped this up greatly. Be prepared to wait three to four minutes for this to finish. But once the screen goes away and you're just left with the emulator, you are good to go on the firmware. Now, big rule of thumb, if you're going to start moving big files from your PC to your Steam Deck, make sure you check them first or else you're going to end up wasting a lot of time if they do not work. So I use the desktop version on my Windows 10 machine to make sure all of the files I need for the games I own are correct. That way I'm good to go to move them over. But when you are ready, go ahead and use your removable media. And if you used MUDEC, it'll set the folders up for you. I've got a tutorial on that. Look below for a link as well. We're going to come down here to the PlayStation 3 folder. And it's very important you get this correct. And I'll explain that in a few minutes once we get back onto the Steam Deck. And if you open up systeminfo.txt in the PlayStation 3 folder, any folder for that matter, it's going to tell you what acceptable file extensions are permitted. And since we know we have that available, we're going to go ahead and copy our data for 3D.GameHero. And we're going to paste it over into the PlayStation 3 folder. Obviously, large gigabyte size files are going to take a minute, but once we get that done and we can go back to our Steam Deck, scroll back down to the folder structure and we can go ahead and find PS3. Now, this is not why it's important to have the right folder here. 
it's important to make sure you know you're keeping track of your files because as we copy that we're going to come over into our MU deck installation whether that's on a micro SD card or on your Steam hardware itself using the internal hard drive. Go to ROMs, go down to PS3. And the reason this is so important is by the default EmuDeck emulation configuration, any game you put here will be automatically detected by our PSC3. It's going to make it a lot, lot easier. Because when we relaunch the program, I haven't told it that game is there yet. It's just in the folder. And 3 d game Hero is going to be ready and available to play. Double click on it and it is going to start executing. Now be aware the first time you run any game on this emulator, it's going to have to do a lot of compilation. And because the Steam Deck doesn't have the fastest CPU compared to a desktop computer, it is going to take a few minutes to like three to four minutes depending on the game and how many different compilations it needs to do. And you will still see when you get into the game, it's going to be compiling PPU modules and shaders. But now we are in 3D Dock Game Hero on our Steam Deck. Everything seems to be functioning perfectly fine which is a good thing. You can press start. You see this intro bump animating. Everything is good. But here's the thing about PlayStation 3 games and emulation. I chose 3 d Game Hero for a very specific reason, but we will get to that in a few moments. Now, as usual, if you want these games to show up in your library when you're just using the handheld operating system mode, you're going to come back into EmuDeck and you're going to run Steam ROM Manager again. Read the warning it gives you there because it does change your controls while you are using it. And just make sure on all the parsers that under Sony you have the PlayStation 3 turned on. I'm not sure why my PPSSPP was turned off, so I'm going to toggle that here for future use. But once you know that is on, go ahead and hit preview, and you're going to see this little direction thing. Just go ahead and hit parse. You're going to ignore the directions. They're always standard and the same. And depending on how many games you have on your Steam Deck, it might take 30 seconds. It might take a minute, but all of the artwork is going to ingest. And you're going to see we have 3D Dot Game Hero here. And if we go up to the system categories here and pick PlayStation 3, we can see all the files we've added in this first step. If you're happy with the cover artwork, hit save to Steam and you will be 100% good to go. So we can just go ahead and quit out of Steam ROM Manager, quit out of EmuDeck, and return to gaming mode to get into our library. But like every other emulator here, we just go to PlayStation 3 and you're going to see the one game we've added for this test so far. Go ahead and hit play and it's going to launch. And because we already did the compilation of the PPUs and SPUs in the desktop mode, it'll launch quicker in handheld mode. It does not require that whatsoever. That's just why you're seeing it go much faster here. So now that we get into the intro, we've got music, we've got audio, we've got all the things we need, including controls, to be able to play this game. But once we go to now loading, you're going to see that we go to a crash menu. I get back into the game and I'm able to get in game here and you will see that everything looks exactly as it should be expected to look. The controls are good. The sound is good. Everything is excellent. But watch what happens as I move around. This game in particular can be a little bit tricky to get running on RPSC3 and that is why I'm using it as an example because we're all good until we try to leave this screen and load into any other area. And I do love this game if you've never played it you 100% owe it to yourself to check out. Leave this map, black screen, back to a crash window. There is a wiki for this emulator. Definitely utilize it. I chose 3 d Game Hero because I know it has a bad crashing problem. Every single game from the PlayStation 3 library will be included here. And if we scroll down to get to 3 d Game Hero, if you click on it and you go to the special notes and known issues, you're going to see the game is not able to be completed due to random freezing. So make sure you pay attention to the compatibility list before you go to all the work to transferring the files. You may as well find out that it does work. And some games will have specific configurations as well. On the GPU configuration, you can disable MLAA for resolution scaling on advanced configuration you can change the FIFO accuracy to atomic and that helps with stability now just be aware that all of the options are going to be on the desktop mode application itself all the applications for CPU GPU audio IO system network advanced emulator GUI and debug are all going to be in here so if you do need to change anything around to make it work for a specific game this is where you're going to want to do it because there really isn't a quick menu within the emulator when you're on handheld mode just because of how this emulator works it's not like some of the other ones are retro arch where you can just go to a menu but make sure you pay attention to that compatibility list check games before you try to play them and you should be good to go 
because now as we move over to Ico running on the Steam Deck, it's running exactly as I would expect. The performance seems to be close to 30 frames a second. Every once in a while there is a hitch, but honestly, even on my PC, every once in a while there's hitches and that is much more powerful than a Steam Deck. But what I'm seeing here, at least on Ico, is very promising. Now be aware that this emulator is still a work in progress. If something doesn't work, I'm sure it will get fixed up in the future. Updates are coming to it every single week, it seems like. Every time I open the emulator up, there seems to be an update to be had. But I will say, when it works on Steam Deck, it works exceedingly well, and I'm super and hyper impressed with what it is doing. This just looks like Ico here, except on the Steam Deck. And I will say, at least in this example, the audio is quite good as well. So go ahead and listen for like 35 seconds, and I'll come back and give you more tips and tricks. Looks great, sounds great, and plays great. Just remember, if we take a look at something like PCSX2 here, there's going to be an entire hot menu of keys currently available via MU Deck. But if we go over to the PlayStation 3 emulator, you're going to see there really isn't anything whatsoever. All of these settings are best articulated in desktop mode. It can be slightly annoying or slightly more time consuming, but the fact that PlayStation 3 runs on the Steam Deck in and of itself is a feat. And I'm moving over to Mortal Kombat Complete here. It's another game that just seems to be working for me, but don't worry, I will explain some games that don't work whatsoever as well. Every once in a while, there will be a hitch. But here's the thing, you see compiling shaders at the bottom left hand corner. Be aware that the first time you play any game via this emulator, it is going to be compiling those shaders. And sometimes even if you've been playing the game for an hour or two, that menu will still pop up if it gets to a shader or technique that it has not yet seen, it's going to have to compile. And sometimes when it starts to compile, there will be some hitching. Like right here, the shaders had to compile because it hasn't seen that effect yet on the Steam Deck for me personally. So you are going to see those things pop up. So just be aware that you might see some hitching, you might see some weirdness the first couple times you play a game, but as you get into it, you should see that less and less and less. And if you do want to change around your control bindings as well, you're going to come back over to the application in desktop mode, and it's going to give you all the different options as to what you want to do. You'll see that there is that NDEV by default, and that's trading the Steam Deck like a Xbox 360 controller. But if I go ahead and hook up a Switch controller, Switch Pro via USB, you will see whatever you hook up drop down in that menu, and you can configure that to your heart's content. And if you mangle all your configurations and you get it totally screwed up, just come back into MU Deck and hit Reset Configuration. That will rebind all the keys based upon your first installation, which in my instance works perfect. Now taking a look at DMC Devil May Cry here, it is working perfectly. It is a locked 60 frames a second. It is fluid, fast, and responsive and looks spectacular. And that is because I am playing it on my PC with an i9-12900K overclocked and a 3090 GPU inside my editing rig. The point that I'm showing you this for is that if you try it on Steam Deck, it's pretty much a slideshow. Steam Deck isn't going to run every single PlayStation 3 game. Something like The Last of Us would freeze for me in like the first 20 seconds. So your mileage is going to 100% vary, read some reports, see what other people are playing, ask around, and you will find some games that are 100% workable on the Steam Deck for PlayStation 3 emulation. Just be very aware that the entire library is not going to be possible at this current period of time. Maybe with softer updates, it'll get better. But PlayStation 3 on Steam Deck is a possibility. Some games work perfectly, some games kind of hitch a little bit, and some games absolutely just freeze. If you have any questions about the tutorial, leave them down below. Otherwise, like and subscribe. We've got a Patreon link down below. We're done with this video, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.